Before we start, the intention of this video is to customize the right IV arm when you don't have flow or have a major resistance of flow of IV fluids um, through the right IV arm for Cement 3G. This customization is considered a post warranty repair. Always consult with your manufacturer if you're doing customization uh, of your mannequin, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Today we're going to be customizing the Simman 3G right IV arm here. What's happening is that when we're trying to push fluid through with the stock IV arm for 3G, it's uh, not allowing fluid through or there's a lot of resistance. This is caused by a number of factors. One, it could be the filter that's in there, could be clogged up, or it's the mechanism in there, or uh, mechanism in there that's causing the issue. Sometimes it can be caused by this. So they don't uh, tell you this, but it's recommended to have the RFID tag in range in order to open that mechanism in there um, to allow fluid through. But we're still having issues, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, remove that part and have the arm to be free flow because we don't use the drug recognition system uh, on this mannequin So for 3G. So first thing you want to do is you want to unzip the skin on either side. Some of the newer versions of the skins have zippers on both sides. That's fine. We don't, so let's undo the zipper here. Move the skin over. Next, we're going to want to remove the uh, abdominal plate. Lift this up in the Velcro and slide to the side. Next, we're going to lift the chest plate up. Remove the two two hoses that are uh, underneath the chest plate. Uh, slide over to the right and then unclip the defib cable. And we're just going to lay it over attached on the left side there, uh, still attached. We're going to raise the chest plate just to make things a little bit easier. And then next we're going to unclip these two wires here and then also undo the RFID tag cable, which you can see down here. So we're just going to undo that. Now what we're going to do is just spin this backwards. I'm sort of impressed I can do this with one hand, but next the clip, one. There's a little tab that you, put, you press down in order to get to release. Try not to wiggle around like I was doing because I can widen the contact points. And then I got those two out of there, so great. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this Allen um, screw here, bolt, excuse me, whatever it's called, and to release the arm, so. Tools for the job we're gonna need today is potentially the Allen wrench that came with a mannequin or a number eight millimeter Allen wrench. Pair of needles, pliers, end snips, some uh, various uh, uh, Phillips screwdrivers, and then a utility knife. So. so next we're gonna do is just remove this bolt, screw, whatever you wanna call it. And don't lose the washer like I do every time. And set that aside. Next, I'm gonna lay the chest plate back down. back over and then now I'm going to just remove the arm. Uh, go ahead and guide the wires out because they can catch sometimes. So I've already unzipped the uh, the skin on the arm, nothing to that. On the back side you're either going to have Phillips uh, screws or um, a torque size. Typically you're going to have the Phillips though. So. I'm going to use the screw gun to remove the screws or drill, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't recommend this for reattaching them, just for multiple reasons. The skin is, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, casing here is gets kind of soft and can get crushed pretty easy. So I like to put them on by back by hand. But we use a screw gun here to, to remove them. So, so I'm just gonna remove the heavy amount of screws that are on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen them all up. You don't need to take them all the way out at this point. But you certainly could. Okay. Now we're just going to release, move the uh, uh, hand skin, just gonna slide it over, it just slips out. 
It's, it's held on by this little cup here. Slide 3 over a little bit. And then we're going to lift this off and roll it over to the back side here. And all the screws are going to fall out. I'm going to lose them all, but I'll find them eventually. So now here's the mechanism I'm referring to. This uh, fluid uh, chamber here is what pushes the fluid through. It's a pump of sorts. And you have all these hoses here. The ones that we're going to... Just going to get a focus in here. The ones that we're going to be um, customizing today are these two right here that come from the fluid or the IV port here. So this port right here on the top side. We're going to reuse this T fitting here um, with these two hoses. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and then cut here. I'm sorry, about here. It's just a, maybe a few inches above where it comes into the IV port. And then we're going to send it back down to the exit port. Actually, we can lift this up. Customize there. So go ahead and lift this right out. It's hard to do it with one hand. There we go. We can undo this cable here. Just go ahead and lift straight up. Nice and careful. I'll kind of separate that a little bit. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to release this. Excellent. So now we can go ahead and just cut this exit port in the back side. Try not to get any fluid anywhere. There may some be some residual um, fluid in there. Okay, this next part. Um, two uh, needles pliers works the best, but you can try to hold on to this. Just don't hold on to the very end, hold on to the middle of this because these uh, plastic connectors can bend pretty easy. hard. Everything's really on there, so. I'm actually, this is on my hand just slipping out the water. I'm actually going to hold on to this, the base of this uh, T-fitting with a pair of pliers and then pull on the other end with the bare needle -os. There we go. And then that is released. And this you can just set aside somewhere for a rainy day or whatever, so. Next, we're going to connect these two here. Now we're just going to reverse, um, sorry, we're going to change the, the connection points for this. So the part where it actually runs out the back, we're actually going to um, connect that to the port coming in. So it's going to look like this when we're all done. And we don't need these little plastic clips anymore either to identify the cables. So you don't want to um, cut this too short where it's bending down and, and going to uh, crimp off, but you don't want it too high where it's hitting the top side of the, of the uh, plate and also do the same thing. You want just enough there. So if you look, I'm gonna bend it down and I'm gonna cut right there. And if you find any residual um, water in here, go ahead and uh, clean it up. This uh, circuit board here loves to um, get water on it and then fail. So you gotta be careful about that. So and we're gonna do the same thing. this. I'm just going to release the other part. Okay, sorry about that. Hit the wrong button. Switch hands. There we go. That's released. Now, again, we're going to see this. We're going to uh, connect the T fitting to the um, ho two hoses going in, the remaining one that's not connected. So, sorry, this GoPro mount is noisy. By the way, this is my first attempt at making one of these videos to share with the community. Let's go ahead and push that one on there, make sure it's on there securely. Again, my hands are slippery right now, so I'm not going to use the, the pliers to help me get it on. Try not to put too much pressure on here um, with the pliers because you can end up damaging the hose. You don't want to do that. So, because then you have leaks. I also rec recommend um, replacing this um, hose here every year with your maintenance because um, when you're pushing fluid through, um, it can cause some issues with these uh, with this. Uh, part where it holds it into place on the upper part of the arm. I can show you this. And can kind of uh, widen here and weaken the area. So 
Um, I recommend just replacing this because to replace this um, chipboard or motherboard or chipboard, whatever you call it, this electronics piece is several thousand dollars. Um, just replace this. And this has the Caesar function and then pulses in there. So you want, you want to make sure that you're uh, mindful of that and don't want to damage it anyway. So anyways, the point is it just replaces hose every year. So there's several companies that sell this. So I'm going to see what my alignment looks like. Just enough hose there. Actually, that will be long enough. So reattach that. Um, I don't recommend um, snaking the hose back up into this um, part where they want where it's supposed to be held. Um, again, again, because of the, the connections where it um, is narrow there and the hose expands because of pressure, it can weaken it right there. So, um, and actually today we're going to um, drill a hole through here, through here, to allow this hose to be in this uh, spot. Um, if that'll work. Yes. So. We're gonna do that. So a little more customizing I just thought of. So because again this hose gets weak. I'm not sure if you can see this picture, but as you can see it's almost like a pinching point for this. So so I'm gonna drill a hole through here and drill a hole through here and just send that hose through that spot. So I'll release it here first. You did that. Alright, so I drilled two holes. I use a seven thirty seconds drill bit. You can also use a quarter, I think, but that worked the best. And you can see I drilled the hole right through the um, uh, labor below the part where it actually would lie in um, to hold it in place on both sides there. And again, that allow the, the there's, it seems there's plenty of room in there for the hose to expand a little bit. So as opposed to here, it's pretty snug. So, all right. So again, now we're going to reattach. And then back over. And that's just going to lay loose in there. So you want to make sure the hose doesn't get uh, clamped or cramped, whatever word I'm trying to use, cramped clipped something you don't want it between the, the plastic there so I'm gonna double check to make sure that's actually up inside of the um, the uh, upper part of the arm there so also I want to make sure that uh, I put my arm skin back in the holder here before I start putting on the screws in because um, that's what holds the skin on and I've done that a few times so so I can find all my screws They're hiding from me. Usually, I'd use like a little med cup or something like that to hold them, but that's all right. This will work for today. It's always fun to have me watch. I try to hunt these things down. Okay, put the arm back in there. Don't uh, clamp the skin in there. Make sure the skin is moving around and not uh, clamped in the um, arm. And again, I'm going to use a number two Phillips to put the screws back in. I don't recommend using a screw gun. Um, again, for multiple reasons. One, it, I've noticed that there's uh, pressure cracks. This arm's actually brand new um, as of December or January. Um, and uh, it's only six months old. And you can see I'm already having problems with the fluid. But anyways, there's no cracks in the, on this one, but most of them ha uh, my arms have cracks in here from taking the arms apart multiple times. It's just the way it is. So just a little bit softer plastic, so. There's no set pattern that you need to follow for this. As far as putting the screw back in place, um, I go to the front, um, or front part of the arm where the skin is, and then the back side of the arm where it attaches to the to the body, um, just to make sure that everything is working correctly. I've got a couple in. I guess I just want to double check my arm is moving around, and that the contact point for the arm to go into the body is also free moving, um, not having any issues. So, so I'm gonna keep going with the process of putting this back in, so. So we're going to make sure that everything works. We're going to test the arm fluid um, at the very end. It wouldn't be a bad idea if you were to test um, how the fluid went through the arm 
with the casing open open to make sure you don't have any leaks because again leaks inside that arm are very 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 bad um, they're several thousand dollars so so make sure that you don't have any but i've done this probably a dozen or more times to these 3g arms um, i actually do them for all of our mannequins this one wasn't done because again the arm was new and i wanted to see if there would uh if there's any improvements so but uh, maybe it didn't have any issues and it was fine for the first five months, so and then started having issues. So, so again, we don't use the uh, the drug recognition system. I honestly don't know anybody that does. It's a great idea, but we just don't use it. So, it's really good for those uh, pre-built scenarios. And I'm told, but it's not been. All you want is those to be on snug. We don't need over tightened. So I'm going to replace my port. I pulled it off to diagnose to see if it was the uh, filter, and it wasn't. So um, other thing we're going to do is actually, now that we don't have that chamber in there, we don't need the filter really um, to filter anything because it's going straight out the back. But what we do need to have this in here is to keep the fluid from going around the IV port. So all we're going to do is we're going to cut this very carefully. Let me put it on a different surface. I'm gonna put it on here, I'm gonna be very careful. I don't recommend this, but let's see if I can do it over here. This. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, now that I've lost my knife, knife is just cut a, a, a slit one way and the other way, just in the the netting part, not the rubber. Um, we still want to keep that. And again, just makes a little hole in there to allow things to pass through freely because we don't need to filter anything. Else. Um, it's good to have a little bit of uh, distilled water or something like that to make to help uh, with the um, IV port and slide back on, make it moist. So. I don't know if people hate that word, but that's why I said it. So put that back on, make sure it's centered. There we go. Now the IV port you want to put on.